coming up today on the Donversations podcast. Why do we have brain fog? Is it normal? Um, yes and no. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's very normal in that a lot of people are experiencing it. Um, no, in that I don't think we are designed to be this way. I think it's our modern lifestyles. I think it's everything that we, not that we are doing to ourselves, it's not our fault, but the stuff they put in our food, the stuff they spray on our food in the fields, the stuff they put in our foods to preserve it, the stuff we are breathing in every day um, in the, from the air, um, and the stress. Welcome to another episode of Conversations. Today we have Lindsay Byrne. Welcome, Lindsay. I'm so happy to have you here. Oh, I'm really, really pleased to be here. Thank you for having me. Yes, this is great because everybody that's been with me knows I've just been on a roll about talking about the brain and cognition. Yeah. And I am going to be completely upfront. I was writing down dementia and, and I sat there. I could not think of the words brain fog. How yes. sexy is that? <laughs> <laughs> well, this couldn't come at a better time. <laughs> what the heck? Why do we have brain fog? Is it normal? Um, yes and no. <laughs> so, um, yes, it's very normal in that a lot of people are experiencing it. Um, no, in that I don't think we are designed to be this way. I think it's our modern lifestyles. I think if you spoke to your parents or could speak to your grandparents, they would say it was not a big thing in their day. And I think it's everything that we, not that we are doing to ourselves, it's not our fault, but the stuff they put in our food, the stuff they spray on our food in the fields, the stuff they put in our foods to preserve it, the stuff we are breathing in every day um, in the, from the air. Um, and the stress, I mean, come on, mm. and jo I mean, if I think back 10 years or 20 years ago, I was not this busy. I was not this stressed. I was not juggling this many balls. Right. Um, and I mean, a million other things <laughs> that can affect your sleep. It's going to affect your hormones. You know, it is it is very normal today, but I, I think we can get back to not experiencing it. I, I had some brain fog during menopause. Um not that I'm all the way through that yet, but I dealt with a lot of the symptoms and um, cleared up the brain fog. So I know it can be done. <laughs> well, that's good. We're going to talk about that. But I was just thinking while you were saying that, how, you know, we've got these devices that are supposed to make our lives easier and smoother and they create more chaos. Like not only do I get upset if I can't figure out the techie stuff and I'm trying oh. and why, why isn't this working, you know, or whatever, <laughs> but it's, our brains are so trained now for it. Like I couldn't even tell you one of my kids' phone numbers. No. I couldn't even tell you. I could tell no. you my mom's because it's been the same landline number that we've had since I was a baby. But yeah. we don't have to use our brain anymore for that yeah. kind of stuff. So you'd think that would free it up. <laughs> well, remembering everything. Is, I don't think it does free it. Well, um, I, I think use it or lose it. So if we're not remembering things like that, you know, it's it's not just the phone numbers. It's being able to find a route somewhere. Um, you know, we use our sat nav for everything. Mm -hmm. You know, if if my sat nav blows up, I am not going to be able to find my way places. I'm going to be right. Stuck. Yes. <laughs> like, what did um, we do before Google? What did we do before um, Google Maps? Yeah, you know that. Yeah, exactly. What in the world? I I fear. <laughs> but, then, but then on the other hand the tech it's supposed to make our life easier but it's not is it it is constantly mm -hmm. beeping and binging at us and dragging our attention away I, I feel like everyone's attention span their ability to focus is severely diminished by constant little notifications that drag our attention away um so yeah <laughs> uh you, you'd think technology is supposed to make things easier but it isn't is it I mean no. I, I you. when my computer is not doing what it's supposed to do I get so angry <laughs> I know and then I sit there and I tell myself like 
this is a smart machine. They have created geniuses have come up with these programs. Clearly it is a me thing. I need to sit back and just, or walk away, you know, take a break. Yeah. I yeah. was just telling my husband that yesterday that I need to move more because I feel yes. like the energy gets stuck in me. Yes. And then yeah. pretty soon I'm just like a zombie and yeah. I, yeah. I just need to get up and walk around, get away from it, go outside go back this to is, a... you're so right you know we're spending so much time at our desks we're not designed to be sat this long we are losing our energy and you know getting outside in nature is such a, a, a an amazing thing it's amazing for our bodies it's amazing for our brains it changes our whole emotions yeah, yeah. more of that <laughs> right so when you're talking about brain fog when should you actually be concerned when does it enter into the dementia alzheimer's arena or mm. how do you know? Yeah, I mean, that's really tough to say. I mean, um, generally when we say brain fog, we mean something fairly temporary. So we tend to have brain fog during menopause or we have brain fog at a time where for whatever reason, we're not sleeping well. Mm -hmm. um, or we have brain fog after uh, an infection. I mean, COVID has brought a lot of post-COVID brain fog, but we tend to think of it as a, a temporary thing. I mean, in menopause, that can still last quite a long time, but temporary. Um, and even if you think about the uh, progression of dementia, we we start with um, SCI, which is subjective cognitive impairment, which is where you think there's something wrong, but you go to the doctor and they say, no, you're fine. <laughs> but you know there is something wrong, but right. it's, it's um, subclinical. It's uh, If they test you for it, they can't see anything. Then you move into uh, mild cognitive impairment where they can actually see in testing, whether that be blood tests, brain scans or cognitive tests, you know, being able to draw a clock face, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, they can actually tell. And then that moves into Alzheimer's. But brain fog and even mild cognitive impairment can come and go. So I... I want to I want to send the message that just because you might be experiencing some brain fog, this is not necessarily the start of anything bad. Yeah. And, and even if it was, you can reverse it. OK. Yeah. Yay. There, <laughs> yay. Yay. There are so many things you can do just through lifestyle factors. So if you're just noticing some really small things like getting lost or where you, when you should know where you are or not being able to find the car in the car park or um, walking into a room and not remembering what you came in for mm -hmm. or just struggling to find the right word and just sort of, ah, uh, what's the word? What's the word? Right. <laughs> That's really common. That's really common in brain fog. Um, all of those, if, you, if you're noticing any of those, I would say don't worry about it because if you stress about it, that's going to make it worse. You know, you're going to notice it more often because you're obsessing about it. And and you're kind of talking yourself into a downward spiral. Right. And it doesn't necessarily mean this is the end. This is this is the first stages of dementia. And even if it were, we can turn it around. So let's as soon as you notice something, the earlier you tackle it, the better results you can get. So as so it's never too soon to start looking after your brain, even if you've got no symptoms right now. But maybe you had parents who lived with dementia. I'd be on it right now. Right. Yeah. Just to be proactive about it. But yeah, yeah I care for the elderly and I have a 98 year old gentleman fit as a fiddle. He is <laughs> so, and bing, 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 doing yeah. just fine. And yeah. if a word escapes him, he gets so upset. You know, he's mm. like, oh, I can't think, I can't think. I, and I always say, it'll come, it'll come. Just stop thinking about it. And yeah. then we'll talk about a bird outside or something. And then it will, it it'll come to him. So I 100% agree that you can, mm. if you sit there and just, I got to think of it, I've got to yeah. think of it right now. It's like every wall is up. Your brain is yeah. just like not giving, not giving. Yeah, you all. put yourself under so much pressure. But do you know what I actually took from what you said there? You know, a 98 year old who is absolutely sharp and physically fit. This is not a symptom of aging. We we shouldn't look at it and say, oh, well, you know, I'm getting on a bit now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that yeah. is not true. We all know great shining examples of people in their 80s and 90s and maybe even 100 who are sharp as a tack. 
so this is not um you know uh I can't think of the word (laughs) (laughs) it's not age related necessarily it's not how many birthdays you've had you no exactly exactly just because you're aging doesn't mean to say you have to start slowing down in terms of memory right so what is it about menopause is it the hormones yeah, it's hormones. Um, so our hormones. hormones. I know. <laughs> that those right. hormones. Well, <laughs> here's the thing. Is it the hormones? See, here's the thing. I genuinely don't believe people in the past experienced menopause the way we are today. Interesting. Tell me what my my mom didn't even know she was going through menopause other than her period stopped, right? Okay. Now that might I know that's one person. Right. And I know you can say that maybe people in the past really experienced um, menopause symptoms, but we didn't talk about it then. And now it's much more favorable to talk about it. But actually, there's plenty of evidence that women in Africa right now are not experiencing it the way we do. Women in Japan didn't experience it. We're just starting to see some of those changes. So it's, you know, the human body is fantastic and it is designed, the the woman's body is designed to have big hormone ups and downs every month um, during our reproductive years. And we're designed for that to sort of slow down. And I know it's a bit jerky, but we're designed Mm -hmm. for that to slow down. And I'm sure that's, that's bound to have some effect. Right. And we're designed to have a much lower level of hormones after menopause, which is, you know, the kind of hormones that we need just to survive um, Mm -hmm. because there are hormone receptors and estrogen receptors in every organ in our body. So um, we are designed to go through this. I don't I don't believe that um, people in the past experienced it as much. And I think, again, it's because um, it's not so much the menopause or the drop in hormones that are causing symptoms. It is that we've had years of abuse in our bodies with these terrible things in foods, ultra processed foods, preservatives, glyphosate sprayed all over our crops, which is basically weed killer mm-hmm. <laughs> sprayed all over our crops. Um, to to desiccate and to dry out the um, wheat so that it doesn't um, it doesn't rot in the silos. You know, we're eating that. Right. And all the things I talked about, all the toxins, all the personal care products with more and more chemicals on them. We've been we've been experiencing this for many, many years. Estrogen is actually a really protective hormone. It protects us from a lot of stuff. Also, um, it protects us from insulin resistance. So the amount of sugar we eat these days, in, um, estrogen has been protecting us from that. Interesting. When estrogen starts to drop, all of those bad habits come to bite us in the bum. And and that that is what is happening. <laughs> so I, I genuinely don't believe that uh, women in the past experienced menopause quite the same as we are now. I mean, I'm sure there will have been women in the past who did experience terrible uh, menopause symptoms, but not the number of women, not the proportion of women that we have today. And that is because estrogen is protective of all the stuff that we've been doing. And then when it drops, everything we've been doing suddenly hits us. Mm. Because I had all the symptoms. And luckily, it all came about at the same time that I was training to be a health coach and learning about functional medicine and how our body systems are meant to work and how to address these types of symptoms and many other symptoms of chronic conditions naturally. And I was I was doing that because my mum's got Alzheimer's and I discovered the Bredesen Protocol and I wanted to learn how to help people to implement that because my mum got such great um, results from it. But the side benefit was, at the same time, I was experiencing menopause symptoms and I resolved them myself naturally. Interesting. So you did not do any type of hormone replacement therapy? No. Yeah. I I personally have breast cancer that runs in the family. And mm. so I don't want to introduce anything 
just based on what they used to say, I don't know what the mm -hmm. new science is. I don't want to take a chance. I'd like to be here as long as yeah. I can. So I'm just going to not mess with mother nature, but that's what seems to make logical sense. If you know, mm -hmm. estrogen's leaving your body, then just go to Walgreens, <laughs> just kidding, <laughs> yeah. not Walgreens. But just go get some estrogen and then it yeah. let have it balance all out. And then your problems are gone. How did no, you do I mean, it? I yeah, I mean, I'm not, I'm not gonna um, say to any woman that they should or should not. That's Correct, and I'm not concept. saying that either. Yep. Yeah, no, I Disclaimer. get that. Disclaimer. <laughs> <laughs> Do what um, you want. <laughs> for me, um, I had had endometriosis um, for all my reproductive years, and I did not want to kick that back off. So yes. um, I, I definitely wanted to do it naturally. Um, and it's a long, hard slog. There's quite a lot you need to do. Because all the things I just talked about, um, I I had been actually already eating organically for many years. I oh, okay. discovered that um, probably 20 years ago, I'd been eating organically and really looking after my gut bugs. Everybody talks about gut bugs now. I was on it 20 years ago, but now I'm like really- that's old man. <laughs> do you do um, been... <laughs> prebiotics and probiotics? Yes. So, okay. yeah. yeah. So um, I was already eating really well. Um, and it's interesting that my menopause symptoms started at the start of the pandemic when my business fell apart. I had no income. I discovered my mom was, um, you know, her. We don't. We already knew that her memory wasn't great, that it was declining, but it really ramped up. But that okay. well, I don't know whether it ramped up or whether um, just because we were trying to move them into a retirement village, whether all the change made yeah. it harder. For hide it so one way but but all of that stress was exactly when all my hot flushes and night sweats started and the and the brain fog started so that was clearly more to do with stress messing with my hormones than necessarily the the menopause and that's um, so interesting too just what stress can do to the body yeah 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 i mean um your body makes hormones um in a cascade so it will start with a basic hormone like adrenaline and then um if it needs to use that as cortisol because we're very stressed it will use it all up as cortisol and that's by design you know if you're stressed and running away from tigers day in day out your body is about trying to keep you alive not about trying to reproduce so it's fine that there's no um no hormones left for reproduction um and that's fine in, in a short space of time right when you've got that chronic stress and it never ends then, then of course that's going to have a big impact so I, I don't think it's uh, in any way a coincidence that my menopause symptoms started when I was going through that massive amount of stress let's talk about reversal let's talk about yeah. reversal <laughs> yes yes because I'm depressing us, you <laughs> I'm bringing you down I'm bringing you down bringing you down <laughs> What can we do to reverse it if we really are seeing lots of symptoms? Yeah. So um, obviously you need to get your diet right. As I said, I was already eating very much organically um, and really looking after my gut bugs. So I had already been eating lots of prebiotic foods and probiotic foods. Um, I make my own kefir. I mean, you don't have to, you can buy it. <laughs> <laughs> but um you know anything that you can eat that is uh, probiotic anything fermented like kimchi or sauerkraut or um kombucha or mm -hmm. miso soup those kind of things um are really going to help you um with your gut bugs and then prebiotic foods are the foods that feed the gut bugs so anything with loads of fiber in loads of really colorful vegetables and um, go for all six colors every day um, mix and match have as many different different plants as you can including herbs and spices um, and all sorts of herbal teas you know really mix it up as much as you can to feed your gut bugs so that's it sort of diet wise if you are a bit more concerned about this is not just brain fog this is something worse then the ketogenic diet makes a really big difference okay. because one thing that happens to our brain when we eat a lot of sugar is sugar is inflammatory. Mm -hmm. And so inflammation goes everywhere, including your brain. But then also a lot of sugar will it cause you to create a lot of insulin, which is a hormone. So that messes with all your hormones and everything becomes insulin resistant. And that is the cause. 
so the ketogenic diet is really good for um giving your brain an alternative fuel source instead of running on sugar run on fats and ketones um which we're designed to do when we were cave people we would be eating loads of fruit all summer and eating loads and loads of fruit that would raise our sugar levels which would raise our insulin and insulin is there to store fat so that as soon as we hit tip into autumn and winter and there's no sh no sugar left no fruit left we start living off our own body fats and ketones okay so we would be metabolically flexible we could use either glucose or fats and ketones for um uh, for a fuel source um and it's interesting as we age our brains become less able to use glucose as a fuel source which is why older people you might know lots of older people start getting a sweet tooth and start craving biscuits oh, <laughs> oh no biscuits, cookies cookies yeah. i should say cookies you don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> that's um, interesting um, but I, I wouldn't necessarily say to all menopausal ladies, get on ketosis. I think that's um, uh, that's a push in menopause because it does mess with your hormones. So two different messages for menopause. Just really clean up your diet. Um, whole foods um, organic if you can. Um, or there's a there's a site called the Environmental Working Group, EWG.org, and they will tell you which are the worst the, the 12 worst, the dirty dozen uh, food products that are covered in pesticides and toxins and the clean 15, the best ones that you don't have to buy organic. So, you know, if you're on a budget, um, you can use that as a guide. Um, but then basically getting away from all the toxins. Um, I do not have anything plastic in my kitchen. I don't use plastic um, uh, cooking utensils. Um, I don't store anything in plastic. Plastic leaches chemicals into the food, especially if it's heated. So if mm -hmm. you get in a takeaway delivery and it's in plastic and it's already hot, that food is full of plastic. Or if you are making food and storing it, you know, keeping the leftovers in plastic, um, that is leaching into the food. Um, Non-stick pans you know terrible toxins and basically anything that you can smell anything with a strong smell get a little bit suspicious about it and start right. um, you know finding less toxic versions all of your personal care products mm -hmm. i've got a great tip for everybody there is an app that i absolutely love and i want everyone to get the app because it's absolutely free it's called yucca y-u-k-a and okay. um that app you can scan the barcode of any food product with a barcode or any personal care product, and it will tell you exactly what the ingredients are and if any of them are bad for you. But the really great thing is, if you scroll down, it will tell you all the alternative similar products that don't have the toxins in. I love that. Yeah, so you don't have to spend a fortune. You know, there are the stuff that is just um, on your Walgreens shelf. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, some of them will have toxins in, some of them will be much better, and they, they're pretty much all at the same price point. I don't understand why some of them need to use the toxic products. So you don't have to spend a fortune to really clean up and detox your, your world. That's so fascinating. And I think it's because we're all really lazy mm. and it's just easy and they make it easier and easier for us every day between the prepackaged meals that are yeah. in plastic. I eat those. Like I never even really sat and thought about it. Yeah. And it sounds like at the end of the day, inflammation is the key to all yeah. our issues, um, yeah. whether it's through sugar or cortisol. Mm. So whatever we can do personally, and I'm not raising little ones anymore or anything. I think that makes a big difference because yeah, we will got, take care yeah. of our children more than we will. <laughs> yes. Yeah. This, this is true. Like, yeah. It's just, this is insane. what I love about the app though, because, um, I mean, for many years I've been telling people, I mean, for absolutely years, I've been telling all my friends, read the labels, don't buy any food products with ingredients you can't pronounce. And it's got me nowhere. And the minute there is a nice, simple app, where you can just go along the supermarket shelf and just pick the best one, scan everything and pick the best one. 
everybody is using the app now. All my friends are really excited about it. So it, it, it is a game changer because it makes it so easy for everybody. Yeah, that's phenomenal. And the fact that it recommends other things at mm -hmm. the bottom, because that's yeah. where it comes into play where you're just like, oh, well, then I don't know what to buy. I don't know what to get. And it's like, well, here it is. Just keep scrolling. Yeah. That's yeah. wonderful. So what do you use on your skin? Um, so, uh, uh, let me see, uh, the, cause I'm in the UK, you're not going to recognize the brand names. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. Sure. I thought maybe you but, just like put castor oil all over your face or oh, something. Oh, no, no, I, no, I'm buying, I'm buying like products. Okay. Um, okay. There's a supermarket chain in the UK called Waitrose. It's a nice supermarket chain and they do a range of products called Pure that okay. are really good. But basically I just, well, when I first got the app, I've got to tell you. I thought I was already really good at this. I was already, I was already checking, obviously, food labels and I'm making sure I can pronounce everything and recognise the ingredients. And, you know, for a lot of the skincare products, the, you don't know what those ingredients are. Right. And there was a few that I knew, like SLS. I knew you don't need SLS in anything. Um, But oh I thought I was doing really well and I would buy the brands that said they were really good you know yes I know exactly and when I got the saying. app when I got the app I went through my bathroom and I threw away 50 percent of my stuff because I don't hate that doing that because it feels so well, wasteful but then it's just feel time. wasteful you know so you're you could give it, it away you can I mean you could give it away I mean <laughs> I feel bad about giving it away now because all my friends know about the app. So I can't give them something bad. <laughs> so I just threw it away. My husband is very much, um, he will use it up and then change. Okay. I, I just thought, no, this is urgent. I've got brain fog. Um, I'm having hot flushes. I'm having night sweats. Um, I need to fix this. So I just threw it all away. And did it help? I mean, I know it would yes. be. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've done a lot. I mean, I, I, the one of the last things I did was buy all new pans for the mm -hmm. kitchen uh, because of the nonstick. Uh, so that is probably the most expensive item I've had to do. Um, so I kind of waited and saved up and thought about it. <laughs> but um, I've got some really good um, titanium. Non you don't have to give up on nonstick. You can have ceramic or titanium nonstick. Okay. Uh, and, and they're fine. Well, and it's overwhelming too, because it's everything. It's your laundry soap, mm -hmm. you know, your dishwasher yeah. tabs, probably, yeah. you know, just everything. And, and it's up here that things need to smell good in order yeah. for them to be clean. If yeah. it, if I can't smell the smells of all the, you know, some meadow, <laughs> yeah, then it but doesn't seem smells, like it's clean, you know? That's not a meadow smell. That's a chemical. I mean, I if it smells very lovely it makes me very suspicious yeah and that's <laughs> good didn't smell of anything. No. if you smell <laughs> yeah. it then it's probably yeah. was yeah. there any vegetable or fruit that surprised you that was not good for you that you really loved or like now you can't eat anymore or you're leery of um no not really okay, good. um no uh I mean I think in general Foods are good, <laughs> you know, fruits and vegetables, they are very good right. for you. I mean, we can have food sensitivities. I did briefly have some problems and I did a test and I found some food sensitivities and I eliminated those foods and I redoubled my efforts on my gut and now those foods are back in my diet and I'm fine. So okay. um, even if some of your listeners are experiencing some food sensitivities, that does not have to be a permanent thing. You know, if we get rid of all, because all of these plastics and chemicals, they're destroying your microbiome. And so um, as much as I was looking after my gut with good foods, those horrible chemicals were were rendering all my efforts worthless. Right. And a lot of those chemicals are what we call xenestrogens which means that they attach to your estrogen receptors, your hormone receptors. So again, lots of your ladies who are uh, experiencing menopause symptoms, I still, I hear from people who are on HRT and they say, most of my symptoms have cleared up. Well, if you've replaced the hormones, why haven't they all cleared up? Sure. If something is, is stopping it at the other end, something is attaching to the uh, hormone receptors in the body before the HRT can get there. So yeah, it's it's the cleaning the stuff up. 
Oh man. Um, let's talk about your book. Show, okay. show your book right. so that everybody can see the, the cover for people that are just listening. It's called, what did I come in here for in here for again? Yeah. I improve my brain health. Okay. So yeah. obviously a lot of people are going to resonate with that because I do it all the time and you feel yeah. like a superhero if you actually remember. Yes. <laughs> Well, oh, you usually right. remember when you go back. Don't you? you remember when you go back to where you came from and then you think, oh, I wanted that. <laughs> so yeah. what, what's your book? What it, is it like a lecture or what is it? No, 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 no. So um, it's a bit of a mishmash of all things. I mean, it's quite well structured, I think. Um, <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, it's, it's my story about how I found the Bredesen Protocol. Um, so my mum's story is in there a bit as well, because as I mentioned, my mum has Alzheimer's. Um, we got her on the Bredesen protocol. She improved. She's not all the way back, but she improved significantly and she's stable, which is good enough. That's <laughs> phenomenal. Yeah. And um, basically all this happened, as I mentioned, during the pandemic when my business fell apart. So I had a lot of time on my hands to retrain, to help myself, to help her and now to help others. And um, so it's my story about how I found it, some elements of my mom's story, how she's improved but I basically go through every element of lifestyle that I changed and what I changed and what was easy, what was hard, how I worked around it. There are stories in there from my clients, things that they've struggled with and found workarounds. Um, so it's it's really there to give you some inspiration that it is doable. Yes. Um, and you can work through it in your own direction so there's a little self-assessment at the start where you work out where you think you are on all of those lifestyle factors and you can prioritize what you want to work on oh that sounds great Good and job. then in, <laughs> yeah and then um in the back there's some coaching templates there's a, a separate coaching template for every lifestyle factor to really it's just like full of questions to really help you think through every possible angle possibly some things that you haven't thought of Mm -hmm. um, just to help you find your best way through it. Oh, that sounds so great. Well, tell people how they can find you, Lindsay. Okay, so um, you can look at my website, which is thecognitivehealthcoach.co.uk. Um, you can find me on Facebook. I am the Cognitive Health Coach. That's my page. <laughs> um, but actually, I've also got a free to join um, Facebook group where I put loads of videos, tips, recipes, all sorts. And you can get support from people also going through the same thing. And that is the Facebook group is called um, Bredesen Support UK. Okay. So Bredesen is B-R-E-D-E-S-E-N. And uh, that's the doctor whose protocol I help people to follow. Um, oh, that's probably enough. You're going to put a load of stuff in the show notes anyway. Yes, no, I so. am. Yeah, I am. <laughs> and one enough. last thing. Do you recommend any type of supplements or do you think that you should do it all through your diet? Um, well, um, as a health coach, it's outside my scope of practice to recommend supplements. Um, I am on some supplements. <laughs> um, and... Uh, you kind of have to do your own research. I, I wouldn't, even for my clients, I wouldn't recommend supplements because, um, well, A, because it's outside my scope of practice, but also, you know, we really need to know what people are deficient in. You know, I could say, sure. oh, you need to take this, this and this, and maybe you don't need it and I'm wasting yeah. your money. Or, or maybe you're already topped up with that and I'm overdoing it. Um, so... Basically, anybody who's got fairly mild symptoms can do this DIY or if they need some support, they can join the free Facebook group or get the book. Um, and um, even my, my own clients, my own coaching clients, some of them have very mild symptoms and we just do it lifestyle wise. OK, um, but for anyone who's a little bit further along the road, I work with Bredesen trained practitioners. These are doctors with the extra training um, from Dr. Bredesen. And you can have testing that, that is hard to get on the NHS in the UK or hard to get from your primary care provider in the US. Um, and you can do much more in-depth testing to find out what are your root causes. Because okay. we're basically looking at, have you got some um, nutritional deficiencies? Have you got some hormones a little bit out of mm -hmm. whack? Have you got toxins in there? Um, and it's just about getting everything back to optimal. Um, so um, if supplements are required, I'll work with a practitioner 
who can test you and tell you exactly what you need that is oh, right for you. That's wonderful. Yeah, I think it's just a matter of all of us being more proactive, taking the mm -hmm. reins back and, you know, eating what we know is better for us, not just letting, you know, a government pyramid, food pyramid, tell us, oh. you know, how to oh, eat. Oh, wow. And... That, that food pyramid, that was written by the food industry. That was that was written by the, um, not the farmers, but, you know, what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the, right. the cereal industry, basically. Yeah, and it's just knowing that there's hope. It's such a good yeah. message. I love that, that you're talking about reversal and things that you can do to correct symptoms. And that's what we all need to know is that we're not so far gone. Like, oh, I guess no. this is it. <laughs> and do you know what? I think there's a massive amount of it is positive thinking. You know, yes. if, you, if you think this is it, it, it might be. Whereas if you think, right, I can beat this, I, I can... You know, I can work 100%. on this, I can heal myself. Our bodies and brains are meant to be able to heal themselves. So if you take that positive view, I think that makes a massive difference as well. Yeah. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's been such a pleasure to meet you and talk to you. And you um, I'll make sure. Welcome. Yeah, everything will be in the show notes. So everybody will be able to find you and find your book. Your book sounds awesome. So that is definitely <laughs> going to be the next one on my list to read. But all right, well, we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank you so much. You bet. Bye-bye.